push the button back on. All right, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Water Pollution Control Authority. Uh, it's a little after seven, Tuesday, June 7th. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Um, uh, David Basile. Here. Joseph Foti. Here. Carol Pletherick. Here. Toby Lewis. Present. Michael Lyon. Present. James Murray, here. Vicky Paliulis, Bala Ramasami, here. Stephen Wagner. All right. Uh, first thing up is the acceptance of the min the minutes of the previous meeting on May third. Um, I wasn't at that meeting, but I did read through the minutes. Um, is there a motion to accept? I I. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as written. All right, and, all, right all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I abstain, I wasn't here. Okay, and one abstain, all right. Present. All right, uh, moving on to item number three, new business, 46 Schwer Road, uh, Powder Hollow Brewery, approval to discharge. Schweier Road. Hi, my name is Mike McManus. I'm the owner of Powder Hollow Brewery, moving into 46 Schweier Road. Sure. Uh, to describe the project, we're looking to set up a small production facility. We have a tap room in Enfield, Middletown, and Western Mass. So we just need a little bit bigger area to produce our products and then get them out to our own locations. We also do a little bit of small distribution to liquor stores and restaurants in a 30, 40 mile radius. So just a little background on the property. There is an existing building with an existing connection. So the application is um, for change of discharge. Um, the prior tenant um, had a workshop and some sort of forklift maintenance storage area with an office. Okay. Any concerns with the just the tra the change um, going from the previous business to this business and the the flows and discharges that would be unique to a brewery? So his discharge we we've already discussed this. His discharge is gonna is gonna uh, be pretreated. 
um, before it's discharged into the sewer line. Um, then you want to speak a little more to the pretreatment system and sure. So we have uh, access now. Historically, large breweries would use centrifuges, which are very common in wastewater. They would use them as a pretreatment, and as breweries are becoming more popular, they're becoming more accessible to small breweries. So we actually have a full-blown centrifuge in-house that's designed for finished product. So anything that we make runs through a centrifuge with a solids discharge pump that is then brought off-site. So the only thing that goes down the drain is the rinse water. So it's uh, very, very minimal amounts that actually go to discharge. Everything is finished product into a package or just basic cleaning. I see. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the discharge of brewery wa wastewater at 46 Squire Road under the following conditions. A, discharge wastewater meets the WPCA's regulated limits. If limits cannot be attained, a more effective pretreatment system shall be required. B, a capacity charge shall be due if the size of domestic water meter is increased. C, applicants shall comply with all miscellaneous industrial user permit and notification requirements. And D, the applicant may have a licensed plumber install a deduction meter to meter water that does not enter the sewer. The meter installation shall also be this, to the satisfaction of the superintendent of pollution control. I'll second that. All in favor? Any opposed? Same. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on to C2, revision to Section 16 of the WPCA Rules and Regulations. I'd like to make a decision on this. We had a public hearing um, held May 3rd regarding the changes to the um, rules and regulations, section 16. Um, and this was a revision update for the existing language of the section. And also it modified the billing of uh, rental, um, rental apartment developments. All right. Any questions? I'd like to propose a motion to accept the um, section 16 changes as presented tonight, changes being in red. Is that an acceptable motion? Because there's a lot of verbiage there. I can't read it all. Read number two. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Motion to adopt the revisions of section, to section 16 sewer use charges and the collection thereof under the South Windsor WPA's WPCA rules and regulations. Second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Okay. Motion rules. All right. Moving on to number three, fiscal year 2022-2023 budget, sewer user fees, and qualified income discount program. Um, again, so we need to make a decision on this. Anyone has anything to add or any questions? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the fiscal year 2022-2023 operating budget, sewer user fees, and qualified income home discount program as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, moving on to item number D, communications and reports. Uh, number one, wastewater treatment plant odor control study presentation and discussion. Tonight we have um, Jason Tang from Tai and Bon who was, um, who put together the, the odor control study for us. Um, this was in response to um, odor complaints from, from the neighborhood. Um, so we wanted to get a better grasp of where the, the source of the odors were coming from. Um, so Jason's here tonight to present their findings. Um, okay, so I'm Jason Tang, so oh. I'm mentioned I'm an engineer, water waste water engineer from Tan Bang. Actually, also I'm local, so I'm a resident of Tan <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Bang. If, if the authority wants to sit in the audience so they can see the presentation, that might be 
Yeah, I hopefully no, no, you can feel free to sit in the audience. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Also, so we did this odor control study back in the next, last year, so the report was finalized early this year. Also, if you are interested in this report, you haven't seen this report yet, so on Google, if you search the keywords, that's South Windsor odor control report, so you will, this will pop up. That's the first one you can find. It's on the town's website. So this, this presentation was prepared by Al Wells, my coworker. So unfortunately, he cannot be here to present this one due to a medical emergency of his brother. So I hope everything goes well with his brother. So that now I'm here to present this study. Also, since we are in this photo, just a quick introduction. So on the photo, you can see that the, the town's waste, part of the town's wastewater trip, uh, trip called water pollution control facilities. The, the odorous air collection system, that's those stack. So all the way to the back on the top left, actually that's, let me see. Yeah, that's, that's the existing biofilter. So that's currently, that's what the town's water pollution control facility used to treat the, the odor. So agenda for this presentation, first, of course, that's the scope of the work. Then we go to move to the data collection. And what we're going to talk about, that's the results. And then based on results, we draw some conclusions and also make recommendations. So last, so we, I'll be happy to take questions if there's any. The first scope of the work. Our scope first is identify the potential odor sources at the water pollution control facility and also the surrounding areas. So also based on that, we also evaluate the performance of the existing odor control systems at the water pollution control facility. As I mentioned, so the, the facility has a biofilter with also the, uh, the duct system to collect all the odorous airs from the odor sources in the, in the plant. So after those, we so some conclusions that develop the like recommendations for the odor control. The first data collection, so that's, we have two sets of da data collection. The first one, that's odor emission sample at the water pollution control facility. This is done by a handhold meter, which can measure that's the hydrogen sulfide, sulfide and also the, the airflow for the odor, odor for, for the odor, odors air in that duct system. So what, the reason why I measure the hydrogen sulfide because hydrogen sulfide is the number one component in the wastewater treatment plant odor. So the typical this is coming from that the decomp decomposition of the organic matter. And also next one, in addition to this uh, emission sample, so that's we also do the odor survey in the surrounding area. So that's about a one mile radius around the, waste, the water pollution control facility. So that's us. This would be a experienced inspector or professional. So he was driving or walking around that area to identify any potential odor sources and also to to give the odor characteristics. For example, if the odor is smell like sewage, smell like hydrogen sulfide, those stuff from, from the water pollution control facility. Or it might come like something like a swampy smell. Maybe sometimes you can even smell like the burn, burn rubber, those type of things. Also, you can smell like grassy, maybe from the low mowing, those type of things. That's the characteristics of the odor. Also, they are to, he also identified as the odor intensity. That's based on the uh, uh, odor intensity scale. So that's tell you how strong the odor is. Also, they also, we also collect the samples. This is done by our, sorry, I did forgot to mention, this is done by our subcontract. These are the older science and the engineering that are based on blooming field. So our next time here is our labor. So the older, they also collect the, the older samples for this older D2T, which that's dilution to threshold. What that means is that, so when they do this measurement, they take a sample, they dilute it, that one, two, to a certain concentration, so they have a panel, they have some, sometimes, most time is eight people. So until they diluted that sample to a, a level that's half of the panel member, they cannot smell any odor 
So that will be that will be the D2T. So for example, if we if we have sample you diluted that by 500 times, so half of the member cannot smell, then which means that the D2T is 500. So the how it's uh, called this threshold that's typical that's the minimum concentration or level of average person can smell. If below that, so many uh, average person cannot smell the odor. Did I go too far? Yeah, so that's uh, good. So now move to the next slide, that's our results. This first result, that's our odor emission test sampling and testing results was done by next year, about one year ago, so June 29th. So this, as I mentioned, this sample was taken from the dark walks of the, the facility's older air collection system. So that's all the locations showed here, that's the uh, locations they are either to be the, the odor generating location, which means that odor sources, or they are kind of like the, the main part of this dart. So you can see here that uh, this was pointer sensor. I don't know how to use this pointer, sorry. So that's, uh, you can see uh, no, number five. So if you see on the location number five sludge holding tank, we identified that we measured that the hydrogen sulfide concentration was high. So that was more than actually more than 100 ppm, that's part per minute. Also, the last location highlighted in yellow, location number 10, that's the odor control duct, which is at, at the end of the odor control duct. That's right before the odors air get into the, enter the biofilter. So that's all the combined odor odors air, that concentration was 25.1 ppm, so that's kind of high too. So that's uh, the last thing I want to mention, when this was done that day, it was a hot day, so temperature was about 93 degree. So and also it's very humid. So that day we, we saw that this is a higher hydrogen sulfide concentration here. Now we move to the next slide. We did two sets of this odor emission sampling. So last one was done about one month later. So that, that day we found out that, you see this, the location number five sludge holding tank is still have the highest concentration for the, for the hydrogen sulfide. But much, right now it's much lower, it's about 20 ppm. And also the odor control duct, the last one, number, location number 10, so the concentration is, is 2.3 ppm this time. So that day, the weather condition was, the temperature was about 68 degree, very high. So that day was kind of mild. Also before that day, we, there was, so there is significant rain before, the, before that day. I think those also kind of diluted the, the sewage get into the wastewater plant. That might also dilute the odor level. So this is those two odor emission sample we did. So I mentioned we also did the odor survey so to find, have someone driving or walking around the, the surrounding area. So in total, we did six surveys. So that's, in here you only saw four of them. So that's the first one, that's the June 29th morning. The second one, the June 29th, so at the same time we do the emission sampling. So that's June 29th afternoon. Also, another one we also did that's August 20th, and also August 25th. Besides those two, we also did a survey at the same time we did the second odor emission sampling. That's the July 28th. In total, we did a sur a six surveys. We only presented four of them here is because only those four we identified that there's potential odor issue might coming from the water pollution control facility. The other two in the July 28th, those morning and afternoon, we did not so uh, the professional, he did not identify anything like related to the water pollution control facility. You can see that it shows the intensity. The intensity, that's, uh, as I mentioned, how strong the, the odor is. So intensity 0.5 to 1 is for most of them. For, for a couple of them, we can reach to 1 to 2.5. So that's the... Uh, so that's 
the, the, the thing I want to mention here is that the intensity, what the intensity can tell us is that typically for intensity 0 0.51, which means the odor is very weak, very faint. So an uh, average person normally cannot notice that odor. But an uh, experienced inspector or someone is sensitive, the sensitive person, they could smell that. So if we reach to that uh, intensity one to two, about one to 2.5, the odor is still considered as weak or faint. But in, the, in this case, so that's typical, average person still cannot notice, will not notice the odor unless their attention were caught to. Like if I, I, I sit here, I think I do not smell something bad. But if someone come to you and say, do you smell that? You, you know, you pay attention and say, oh yeah, I do smell, I do smell something. That's kind of like this. So, but if you, but this odor normally will not attract your attention unless someone tell you. So, or someone sensitive, they can tell you. So this is like most of the case here. So the next one, that's, uh, this was a sample that we, we took, or we also took some other samples, I'm not, I cannot, list all of the results here, but those are in our report. So based on that, those we kind of draw some conclusions here. First is the odor emission at the water pollution control facility. That's, so uh, I did not talk, they didn't mention this in, at the beginning, before, that's the existing biofilter, actually we found that it's not performing well. We found out that in some areas, there are the, the filter have freaked out with no odor control, for, for instance, like, in some area, we found that uh, the odor concentration at the inlet versus uh, odor concentration from that area's outlet, that's the same concentration. So which means there's some locations we do not get treatment. In some locations, we get minimum treatment. Maybe that's called, that might cause an issue here. So a lot of things that we found out as I present, so the, the odor load at the water pollution control facility is very a lot. I mentioned that the, at the last location 10, so that at the, the final duct, the hydrogen sulfide concentration can vary from 25 ppm to 2 ppm. Sometimes it could be lower. So that's, that's a significant variation. Also, we also found that there are some additional odor sources at the water pollution control facility. That's for instance, that's an influent, an effluent channel for the, for the primary clarifier. So this has moderate hydrogen concentration, hydrogen sulfide concentration we found. So based on the odor survey in surrounding area, we found that uh, mostly those uh, over offside sewage characteristic. That's why I say that characteristic is, so those panel members, when they smell those things, they'll say, oh, this smell like sewage. That's how they classify those. So those sewage odors detected around the main street and also the Weber's Road by the water pollution control entrance. So that's near the, the water pollution control facility. And also they also identify some other offsite odors like the manure swamping, soil, uh, earthy, those might relate to like the agriculture activities or something like the, as I mentioned, the no mowing, sometimes maybe the, because the flood is a grass line, so that might cause those odors. Also, as I mentioned before, that uh, odors, that they are difficult to character, characterize because individual has different sensitivity. Some of us, maybe like me, I'm not sensitive to odor because I'm working in wastewater treatment plant, water pollution control facility, facility a lot, but like my wife, she's very sensitive to those types of things. So everyone's different. So based on the results, based on, so we have to make some recommendations. So the first recommendation we say that is, right now the, the facility has the existing biofilter. They are considered to rehabilitate the existing biofilter. Right now, the existing biofuel use the media actually is use those media as wood chips, mulch. Those are not ideal for a biofuel for odor, odor treatment. So we, the, the town or the facility could consider use the 
engineer in organic medium, so this will provide a longer life circle and a great treatment compa capacity. So we give an example here, biosorbents, bio, bio, bio rings. Like the, right now, we are, we are using those, the wood chips and the mulch, so typically you have to replace those every few years. But like those, those, bio, those in organic medium, they may, those can last more than 20 years. And also those provide a very good treatment. For example, like I mentioned here, the biosorbents is performing well at the Westley Rhode Island wastewater treatment plant. So this treatment plant is located in a neighborhood sitting on around the Park Tart River. So this is a highly creational river with multiple marinas. So this actually, this wastewater treatment plant, they, also, they used to have the same issue we have here. They get the older complaint from the neighborhood, from the neighbors near the, the water, wastewater treatment plant. So about four years ago, they replaced the median. They installed this, this, those inorganic median. So since then, they haven't received any complaints. So the, the operators are very happy with what they did. And also, one thing I want to point out is that replacing the biofuel the median is relatively low cost compared to the we install any other new odor control treatment technologies. Also, this is this technology, the biofuel filter is what the, the water pollution control facility have now. So the operators are familiar with those process. So it's it's easy for the transition. Also, the biofuel that utilize natural naturally occurring bacteria to treat those odors. So it's kind of considered environmental. But one thing is that the biofilter performance could be affected by, by significant change in odor load and humidity if this is very significant. But in typical consuming, bio, biofilter can remove that odor by more than 90%, especially for hydrogen sulfide, they can remove the hydrogen sulfide by 99%. So the next, if the, if the tongue Decide not go with that so rehabilitate the existing biofilter. There's a lot of options. Just replace this one with the activity carbon filter. So the carbon filter, so they are pretty reliable. So we use carbon filter everywhere. We use that in our home to treat water. They also can treat treat odor. So they kind of absorb those odor stuff like the hydrogen sulfide to the surface of median get it removed. They provide more consistent odor removal. So the performance is not significantly affected by changing odor load or humid humidity if that the filter is designed correctly. So but this one will require replacement of carbon every I should say this every two to five years. So the median, you have to replace them, put the new carbon, like our carbon filter in house, we have to replace that once in a while. And also, th that will come up with a cost. Also, the disposal of that carbon filter, so that will be some other cost too, additional cost too. So that's, the, that's one option. Besides those two, so as we talked before, so that's uh, in the water pollution control facility, there are some areas, they have high hydrogen sulfide concentration. So we think that makes sense if we install some smaller, we call a satellite system to treat those areas. That's the slide holding tank, for example. So this, the small system, so that come with a lower cost, it can treat the, the strong odors and also reduce the, the odor load to the biofilter. So there are two options. One is install a small activity carbon filter for the for sludge holding tank but we did talk with some vendors, they did mention that the, the sludge holding tank sometimes the concentration is too high. If we size the activity carbon filter to treat that tank, that filter actually could be quite big because the high concentration we are designed to treat peak load. So, that can, so in that case, we still end up with a, a kind of large system here. A lot of ways, a lot of way to treat those hydrogen sulfide at sludge holding tank would be use something they call it a van pack treatment system. So this system, they provide something they call it uh, produce uh, hydroxyl radicals, they, which is a very strong oxidizer that can oxidize uh, hydrogen sulfide and to get rid of the odor. 
So the last recommendation, so this, this one is kind of minor compared to other ones. We mentioned that influent and effluent chain of primary car fire, they have some moderate odors, they are not covered. So we think that if we cover those areas, we cover those areas and also loop them into this odor control air collection system slash treatment system. So we can just address odor created in those areas. So that's a recommendation. So that's pretty much what I have for the presentation here today. So I will happy to take questions. Also, before you ask the question, I just want to show you. So this is a photo for Dr. Biosaurus. Biosorbent installation at the Western wastewater plants. So they did this pretty simple. Those, those million looks like a lot, but those are more organic million in there. The first installation for this type of million for this company was installed back to more than 25 years ago. So, so far they have to change any of the million. So the performance still have, have been very good. Also kind of touch base on the cost. So we talk about all the <coughs> So what's the cost? What's the money we're going to pay for this one? So the first one for biofilter, we estimate that the cost will be about half a million. So one thing I want to point out is that this is a very rough cost estimate. So be before we do any design, because this is just a study report, we haven't studied any, studied any re re design yet. A lot of things, this cost estimate was done back to last year. So since then, the price actually went high. Everyone knows that because of inflation. So this installed, you will see that the million itself will cost about $137. So a lot of will be like the construction, contingency, anything like those, in total it ends up about 500 or half million dollars. So the next one, so if we go with a carbon filter, install a carbon filter, what's cost? So that's about one, last year's price is about 1.2 million, I will assume right now be one, at least one half million dollars to do the carbon filter. So a lot of things we talk about is through a localized or satellite treatment system for sludge coating tank, that costs about $400,000 do that. So that's pretty much what, yeah, those cost information we have here. So that's what I have for my slides. So now, yeah, for any questions, so I'm happy to answer. Just a second, lady, if you can go back all the way there. I can get all your samples. We'll get to where these initial samples, but you said they had, your samples were within one mile of the sewer plant. All right. Let's Start with that one. Okay. This one. No, the one before that. Before that. No, there's one right before that. Okay. <coughs> On this, you state that the surveys were done within a one mile radius of the sewer treatment plant. Yes, probably one mile. Okay, looking at your data, I counted 32 sites that were sampled, ranging from two miles south of the plant yeah. to a mile and a half north of the plant to approximately a mile and a half northeast and east of the plant, and about three quarters of a mile south of the plant. There were 32 samples that were taken. There's seven people here that live within a thousand feet of that sewer treatment plant. I live 524 feet from the, from the sludge holding tank. Okay, not one sample was taken at any of our homes or near any of our homes. So first, I have to be very correct. So the sample location is not. You, know, you can talk with me. So first, that's the sampling locations. So the sampling locations is not we choose our location. It's that this professional, he, he was driving around. He smelled something, then he stopped. 
to, to take that sample. That's a place That's below K. Yeah. I understand. I understand. <laughs> okay. If you went a mile and a half to find a, a rubber wheat treading facility, if you went a mile and a half to find a restaurant, if you went a mile and a half to find farmer's field, it did not come to any of the homes that have had an experience of this for years. Having said that, let's go to the next slide. On this slide here, you're pointing out that there's 25.1 parts per million H2S is a, is a level at which people will notice it. Yes. I'd like you to comment on number five, where the, the hydrogen sulfide concentration yep. is greater than 100. It exceeds the ability of your device to measure. Yeah. So what would the odor be from that? Would it be high? something we can smell? First, I have to, a lot of sense, as I mentioned, those samples were taken in the dark. So the, so that's only in the, it's in a, how we call it, a cell can coming through the dark, coming out. So that's, a, that's not the concentration in the atmosphere. Well, what, <laughs> what is the sludge holding thing? That's open. Uh, no, that's open. It's covered. Yeah. It's covered. So that's it's covered. Does any of it leak out to the atmosphere? Oh, you would. I, would, I bet it would be some Yeah, I would bet too, because yes. I can smell. Yeah, yeah that, I can answer part of that question too. That's a um, negative pressure tank, so the tanks are covered, um, and that's where the odor control duct draws air from that tank, but which ends up at the biofilter. People here can so. smell that. You, your, sampling system, your sampling sites did not account for the people that smell it. When we call, our, our level of, of odor is greater than the point uh, or the, than the two that you say is a faint odor that only is recognized by people who point out and say, you smell that? That's not what we get. We get to shut down our parties. We get to shut down our barbecues. We get to not be able to sleep at night because of the smell. So telling us and trying to convince these people that the odor is, is negligible is not true, it's false. It's much higher than you're indicating. So first thing, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, so I do not have the report and presentation. I only report that page 10 is the true best one. So that's, that's uh, the water pollution. I know where it is, it's, yeah. it's 500 feet from my house, I can yes, see it. I'm saying that's also the location of the sample. Right. There's two the samples, yeah. so, okay. Yeah. Let me show you where I live. I live here. Yeah. Okay. And you didn't take a sample. You didn't take a sample from my neighbor who lives 300 feet north. The people across the street didn't get sample. So telling me that sample of a mile and a half away indicate no odor is meaningless. It's meaningless to these people. So yeah, there, there were samples taken outside at the entrance of the facility, and then again at um, the intersection of Main Street and, and Vibber. Yeah, yeah, I, I know the intersection. So, I walk there every day. I walk right. by it tonight. I could smell it tonight when I walk by the plant. So don't tell me that it's a negligible odor. No, I'm just letting you know there were samples taken at those locations, though. Okay. So just I understand that you picked the sample at these locations, <coughs> but you detected an odor. How about going over the, the odor types that your, your group has said exist? You had rotten cabbage, H2S, feces, Mark Hafton, rotten cabbage. These are the smells that we live with. We have to put up with this. Mm -hmm. Whenever the sewer treatment plant decides it's out of the sink. This is not an unusual circumstance. We get it virtually every week, one or more days. This is not a new problem. This problem has existed for years. Mm -hmm. Years and years. The last upgrade, the major upgrade, we were told that this situation would be mitigated shortly. Ten years later, we're no further along than we were ten years ago. Excuse me, sir. W what is your name? My name is Floyd Barino. Floyd. I'm at 763 Main Street. Th thank you so much for being here and saying this. There's a lot of questions to be had, so this well, is. I understand it a lot, and but so I don't, want the, I don't want the public or yourselves to believe 
that this older issue is trivial. It's not trivial. I don't think it is at all. Okay. Well, I hope that message is coming across from what I'm saying. And I don't think that this gentleman is indicating how bad this order really is. I agree. In fact, I had a whole slew of questions I had myself. Okay. I hope you answer some of the questions that I'm going to ask because I have more questions. Well, you have it. Floyd would be happy to, if you have a question, ask the question. My question is, what are you guys going to do? We'd like to help you find a way to get something done. Good. The first recommendation is to use the existing biofilter. We're going to replenish the biofilter material, the biofilter material that was chosen two years ago. Two years ago it was chosen, it was, it was replenished. The biofilter material lasted approximately a year and a half because after that was put in, you decided to do this, do this study because it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So the solution that of replacing it with what doesn't work seems like it's, it, it's a waste of taxpayer money. I agree. Uh, one time, so this I want to explain. So the media they replaced two years ago are still those uh, are still those wood chips, right. which are not this engineered media. No. So we are recommending. Yes. Let's well, clarify that. The engineering media is a big step forward. Yes. Okay. I hope this this panel, this group, doesn't consider stopping with just replacing the media and doing it with the same media. We need to take at least one big step forward. And that is going with engineered media, which has a higher cost than the two hundred thousand dollars that is allocated in this budget for us. But there's no guarantee that that's going to last much more than four or five years. Mm -hmm. The other option, which go up to one point two million dollars, will provide a method. Now here's the question. The main let's just talk about engineering studies. The main disadvantage of rehabilitating and trusting the existing biofilter is the inability to handle peak overflow. On the WCCPA, we will likely contribute to handling this problem, even if the biofilter is rehabilitated. So you have a problem, and you rehabilitate it with the same piece of material. It's not going to work. It doesn't make Stop sense. Stop the It's not going to work. You've proven that over the last 10 years. It doesn't work. Thank you, Floyd. If you have other questions, please let one of us know at some point, because we, we, I'm sure we'd like to yeah. get down to the bottom of this. So, like I would just say, so that's the medium we, can, we are recommending. So it's different medium. It's not like, like the same medium we used before. Just want to clarify that. Also, our report. So if you have a report, go to the report. So we did sample. Most of the sample are taken around that uh, intersection, so right there, road and also main street. So just want to clarify that. So none of us had, had a chance to read this beforehand. Um, or why we did. You sent it to us, didn't I? I didn't do it, so I, my, my apologies. Um, but when someone says they have some recommendations, what I'm looking for from a pro is to tell me what to do by your experience. But it seems like what you recommended was five recommendations that we phase in and do all of them. And, and is, that, is that the best thing according to your experience? For, for us, that's, I, we talk with uh, the water pollution control so uh, before they replace those million <coughs> also, they did mention us once they replace the million, put new million in, actually the odor came, odor was, uh, was good, no odor actually, so odor is good. So they did not get complaint. So, but that did not last long because those, those millions, those like wood chips, they also, they are part of organic matter, they also decompose. Even in themselves, eventually they can even generate the hydrogen sulfide. So that does not last long. That's why we recommend this in organic medium. Also, engineers, so they can last longer. So more than 20 years, they, they warranty is 10 years, but keep their operation always last you know, 20 years. That's why we recommend, one thing also because of the cost of the project as well. So as I mentioned, that's this, uh, replace the median with a new median that will cost about a half million dollars. But we did talk we did talk to the vendor also. The median itself, the cost about $137. So 
if the town, if us uh, can do it by ourselves, that we can reduce the construction costs a lot. A lot of things for activity carbon builder. So the carbon media need to be replaced every few years. That also come with the cost. So typical, we're talking about uh, about uh, 20, 20K to something like 50K a couple of years, one, two years to replace those media. That's why we saw that if we do a phased approach, so that's first, right, definitely the new media definitely will reduce the hydrogen sulfide concentration, will, will mitigate the, the situation. So we do this as a first step. So if this goes well, then we do not need to do the other stuff. But, but if this really still, we still get a complaint, we can look for the other recommendation, like a carbon builder. Even with carbon builder, I know someone might ask, so, if I install the biofilter, then I install the uh, other activity carbon filter, that which means I double invest, right? I, I'm wasting my money. But it's not really that case. What we can do is that we put this biofilter there, but sometimes if we get the higher peak load, we can put a valve switch somewhat lower here to the activity carbon filter. We can have both systems. By doing that, one thing is we can reduce the load to carbon filter or we kind of, how do I one make the carbons like longer, that will reduce the replacement cost. That's one way to do it. Right. So what are the known effects? I'm sorry, what's that? What are the known effects of odor? Physically, environmentally, mentally, emotionally, what are the known effects? Or is it just smell bad and it's, un it's yeah, not pleasant? Smell bad. But are, is, are there, are there any health hazards? Very high concentration, it can I damage our health, but I mean, that can be much, much, much higher. So I mean, much higher than what good. we're talking here. Uh, it's not good, it's so very good. Yeah, just smell bad for this one. Is, but if we really good. reach very, very high concentration, not in this case, like if we get someone getting inside that store, it's the coating tank, that, that might get someone killed. So we do not recommend to do that. So, but in the, like the odors in our, in our neighborhood, those, those are very low. So, so those will make you do not, do not smell good, but will not damage or impact your health. If, if anyone in the audience has a question, that we really person. need to, you know, come up to the podium so that we can get it, you know, get you on the microphone. Jean Howitt, I live at 763 Main Street. I live right very close to uh, the- I uh, think I'm the only one that didn't read it. I, I'm the, the only one that didn't read it. I, yeah. I read it thoroughly. Yeah, we were I, the, the review. Yeah. yeah, I'm the only one. I, so. then you realize that they, they're, they're ending up saying, you need to move away from the bottom. It's not gonna work, okay? So that line my cousin just read to you, saying that the main, uh, the main problem with Yeah, so, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to point out for the authority and, and residents, um, over the last four or five weeks, we've been working on 
trying to reduce the loading to the biofilter just because of the short circuiting and the information that we have now. Um, a lot of that focus and attention has been on the sludge storage tanks, which was pointed out to be over 100 parts per million of H2S. Um, so we've made some adjustments. Um, we've been trying to increase the trucking frequency to keep our tank levels down. Um, we recently just, uh, this week, started a chemical addition, um, which helps oxidize odors, or the H2S, um, to bring that level down. Uh, but the big thing is that we've been trying to manage them a little bit differently with our mixers. Um, we used to run the mixers almost constantly, and that was actually creating H2S plumes, um, which we've discovered. Um, since, so since we've essentially shut the mixers off, um, the average H2S reading in the sludge storage tanks has dropped from 112 parts per million to 18 parts per million. So we've seen a significant decrease in H2S in that regard. What, what um, kind of time frame, Tony? What, what's the time frame for that, um, that change? It was about uh, a month ago. We started. Okay. We started taking daily readings on the H2S levels around the, the treatment facility, um, just to get a better handle and better understanding of um, the cause and effects of, of H2S sure. levels. My name is Judy Strayer. I'm 567 Main Street. I wasn't going to talk tonight because I'm not one of the close neighbors to Wood Library and, and these people. But I'll tell you, um, this problem is not fixed in four weeks. They have been trying to change things for 40 years, and it hasn't changed. So now what we hear, again, is that, oh, we're trying to do this. And yes, it might, it might help for two weeks or three weeks, but I, I don't have any odor at my house. But we have started not walking down Main Street anymore because it is so stinky. It is horrible. We've got Wood Library there who has we have Natasha, uh, we've got the Indian Village there. People come from all over Connecticut to go to Ludwood Library, to go to programs, and you know what? They say, what is going on with South Windsor? What is that stink? And it is, it's, it's not, you can't just take one measure, measure or two measures, it's intermittent. You might go there and, feel, and find no odors. And for the last couple weeks, I haven't smelled it. But I'll tell you, these people who live next door and people who come to Wood Library, go to the activities, go to the music things, sometimes they have to close the windows. People have sent, um, people who have um, a party at their house, they've had to close it down because the stink is so bad. So, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ask how many people here have found that it is a nauseating, not a little odor, but a horrible odor. How many people here have smelled it? Everybody. It's intermittent, but it is every week for some of these people. And I just want to make sure that you know that this is not a little problem. It's a horrible problem. And people who come down for the Hartford Marathon, if the, if the odor happens to be there, what are they going to think about South Windsor? That is their image of their town, that we have stink by our sewer system. It's really appalling. And I just wanted to share, you know, what my idea is. And I'm kind of ticked because you're talking about, you're talking about fixing it. Well, we're, we're working on it, we're working on it, and, and it's fixed. This has been going on for 40 years, and that's what people have been saying for years and years and years. So why don't we fix it? If we know what the fix is, a million two is a lot of money, a million five is a lot of money, but it's nothing compared to the reputation of our town. Thanks. Janet Wade Ute of 482 Main Street, South Windsor. I'm a little bit south of where this happens, um, but my husband and I, um, we call each other, I'm the ultra-sensitive nose and he's the dead nose. 
And we have been on Main Street only 23 years, and in the 23 years, the odor problem has always been there, as the neighbors will attest. But what has happened is that it's moved from, you know, the cluster around the Wood Library where we volunteer a lot to between 673 Main Street is the furthest south up to Newberry Road, which is the furthest north. Now, that's only between the hours of 7 and 9.30 or 10 when we do our walks that way. But my questions are, and I have a question, number one, um, I'm concerned about the peak load and of the alternatives um, mentioned, which will handle South Windsor as we grow? Because my concern is if this study was commissioned a year and a half ago, this was when the town of South Windsor thought we were shrinking, not growing as we are today. And my concern is how was growth factored into the study at all? And what will that mean? Because it seems like we're always chasing something. So for the, the growth, I would, I would not think the growth will impact the odor generating issue much. So we will have the same thing here, same treatment system. The, the water pollution control facility was designed to handle higher flow. So from that part, I will see no impact. So also the growth we're talking about, that's, are we talking about, do we get any space specific odor generating facility in the town or just like the neighborhood, like just residential? Residential, I would say everything is about the same. But if we get something like, uh, some business can generate odor, that would be different story. My next question is um, that I have not been able to find, and I didn't see in this report. Hydrogen sulfide is an EPA pollutant, and it is regulated in some industries. And my question is, what are the allowable hydrogen sulfide discharges by the EPA, be it Connecticut or federal? Because Connecticut could have lower. I have not been able to find that. Hydrogen sulfide, this is per OSHA. So that's uh, hydrogen sulfide normally regulated in the or in working place. So that's uh, 10 ppm for eight, for eight hours. That's uh, they call it the PEL, per perceived uh, emission level. So that's, so if that's a worker working in an area with a hydrogen sulfide high concentration like a 10 ppm or higher, 10 ppm, they're allowed to work in that for eight hours. That so would not cause any health issue. That's the uh, OSHA re regulation. And so, so my concern is, and maybe I'm looking at this, I, I will tell you that the odor is actually more than 20 ppm. Yeah. And so if we don't send monitoring to the appropriate conditions near the housing, I would suggest that we need to know that. Because yeah. there is a potential that it has health effects. Yeah. It also So hydrogen sulfide, yes, it is can grow the pipe or something, but it's at a higher concentration. The odor we smell, the concentration of the odor we can smell, that concentration we are talking about, it's 0 0.01 or even less ppm. So we are, we are, our nose, as human beings, we are very and sensitive to those, yeah. So, so my question is, last question, and then I'll shut up, is what is included? express our frustration and I want to say thank you especially to you because I know this has been a hellish time and um, it's uh, not goes without saying that we appreciate it it's just not you know not enough but not due to your action yeah thank you I mean we do want to correct the issue we want to mitigate any odors that are coming from the treatment facility um, so what we've been doing is utilizing the ports that have been um, inserted in the different Parts around the plant, as a reason, you know, from the from the um, collection points in the treatment plant from the study. Um, so we've been taking, we've been monitoring those points every day, um, and like I said, we were monitoring, getting readings with uh, 
uh, mixers on, mixers off. Um, so we're able to start, we're starting to see relationships between hydrogen sulfide production uh, versus our tank levels um, and that sort of thing. Um, but again, it's four weeks of data. We're still trying to connect dots and, and reduce right. and Sometimes the weekends, for whatever reason, in the summer months, often it's just almost all the time that I don't. And I'm not down there every month for that, but it's weird that sometimes the data doesn't change. So oh. Data always has changed. Yeah, no, that's that's good information to have. So if yeah, if you have um, more information on that, we you can certainly give it to us, and we'll add that into our file here and use it as uh, data points. I wanted to ask too, as a neighbor, has it gotten worse over the last, say, five years, or yes. has it? It's, it's for me, and I know the coast savers can speak even better, but when we first moved here, it was rare for me to smell it beyond five houses, you know, close by. And now, as I say, it's all the way down to 673, which is about three quarters of a mile south, and then often we'll smell it to three quarters of a mile north and it depends on the wind and as I'm interested because in the last week or 10 days actually prior to the last week or 10 days but that time before that had been less and I was going wow because I'm talking through the winter three out of five days we would smell strong sewer odor which is much higher than the intermittent used to be in the colder winter so thank you Good evening, I'm Chris Wilco, 756 Main Street. Uh, just to echo some comments, but first of all, I have to make one correction. I think you have to give the people on Main Street credit for knowing the difference between a smell of manure and the smell of sewage, because we all live near farm fields, so my neighbors and myself, when we hear some of these anecdotes, manure, swampy smell, believe me, we know the difference between manure, swampy smell, and sewage treatment. But I wanna echo some of the points that Judy made because I heard one of the committee members say, like, what difference does this make? Does it kill people? Does it injure vehicles? Or No, I mean, this is a smell. It's an annoyance. But again, it's both from a quality of life standpoint and a quality of town standpoint, it's both personal to the residents as well as the town. Personal to the residents because you've heard already, and ad nauseum you're gonna hear it, that this affects our lives. It, it smells. It drives indoor gather or outdoor gatherings indoors. It, it, in the summertime when your windows are open, you have to close your windows. My wife and I are having a baby shower for one of my sons uh, a couple weeks from Saturday. So we can control a lot of things. We can control the menu, we can control the tables, we can control who we invite, and we can't control some things. We can't control the weather, but we get a tent from Taylor Rental Center. The one thing we're most worried about that we can't control is whether we get a bad windy sewage treatment plant day and we have 60 guests from South Windsor and out of town and you get a stench blown through your yard. And the response, the question is, why does it smell? Well, that's the sewage treatment plant. Well, why don't they fix it? And again, Tony, we're not blaming you, but it's like, we don't know. I mean, it's been kind of a persistent issue. But last night, again, for fair disclosure, we, we uh, addressed the town council on the same topic during the open forum. And my point is this goes beyond uh, the local residents within a half mile of the sewage treatment plant. Judy mentioned some of these points. The Wood Memorial is probably one of the few centrally located 
popular attractions in South Windsor. And the wood gets a lot of visitors throughout the year. Certainly uh, in the summertime, there's, there's activities, there's outdoor activities. Uh, every December, there's the gingerbread house exhibit. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but we draw thousands of visitors from around the state as well as South Windsor. The Hartford Marathon, one day in October, 5,000 to 10,000 runners go up and down the street. Uh, we have innumerable walkers, runners, bicycle riders that use Main Street. I'm sure some of you, if you uh, have had the opportunity to do it. And, and lately, it's the Nawashi Village, which, again, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. It's a Native American village that was built behind the wood, proximate to the sewage treatment plant. There are busloads of students now that come from elementary schools, both in town and around the state, that are visiting that site. And I wish, I don't believe the person from the wood is here that spoke last night, but they have been written up in magazines, they have been featured in, in articles and TV shows. This will continue to be a very popular destination for people. And I think one of the funny comments she made, and I'm paraphrasing her, is we didn't realize when we introduced this village that it was gonna be a multi-sensory experience, meaning not only would it be the sights and sounds, but it would also be smells, i.e. the sewage treatment plant on a bad day is wafting into the Nawashi village. So my point on, on all of this, again, is when you talk about what's the damage here and, and how does it impact people, it impacts, obviously, the homeowners within a certain area of the plant itself. But it also looks poorly on the reputation of the, of the town. If people on a marathon day or on a Nawashi village day, if they come down and the wind, again, is blowing in the wrong direction and they smell this, that, that's going to be communicated. And again, it's, it's not that one area of town where the wood is and Nawashi Village, again, it is a very popular destination spot for a lot of people, both in town and outside of town. And our, our issue is just fixing this permanently. We believe that there's been some solutions proposed, but what we'd like to see happen is for this to go away as an issue. This is not pie in the sky. We've spoken to people in other towns Glastonbury's plant is right next to a, a field where kids participate in sports constantly. They don't have this issue. There's other plants in different towns where they don't have this issue. So all we're asking for, again, is, is a viable long-term solution to the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, privilege to uh, address this uh, meeting. I'm James Dina. I live at 789 Main Street. And if the uh, street address doesn't ring a bell, I'm midway between Wood Library and the sewage plant. And uh, myself and my neighbors often argue uh, who's the closest. I think I am. But uh, that's uh, beside the point. We're, we're maybe closer than we want to be. Uh, first, I'd like to offer a very brief historical perspective, which won't take much time up. And I believe that one of the keys to knowing where we're headed is knowing where we've been. And that's the purpose of doing that. Uh, my, my wife and I and two young children uh, moved to South Windsor in 1974, not 40 years ago, 48 years ago. And before we moved in, we knew the sewage plant was there, and we called the town agencies and asked about the operation and they gave us glowing reports of how efficient it was. Back then, there were probably, we learned much later, probably only 20 households tied in. Far cry from what we have today, right? And uh, in the last 48 years, I'm hard pressed to remember even a single year where we didn't have some odors. And I can remember many years where we had intense odor situations, and so many times it was, it was, it was quite, uh, quite defeating. And, this spring was one of those times. But let's fast forward and not dwell on that. I just want you to know how long we've been experiencing this. Uh, we're all familiar with the, uh, the renovation, the upgrade of, of this sewage plant. We were informed in 2008 by letter from uh, Mr. Fred Shaw. I think most people here know who he is, don't they? 
He was a superintendent of pollution control uh, for many years. I knew Fred before he was in that office, and we had many exchanges over the years, uh, which were frankly pretty civil. Uh, and, uh, and he informed us in 2008 that uh, there was going to be a major upgrade to the facility that would take about three years, and that did take three years, 2009 to 2012. And in 2012, March 28th, uh, we got a letter from Fred Shaw, who is still superintendent of the pollution control facility, and informing us that, that the town is now near completion of the upgrade. And uh, it will be finished soon, and he thanked us for our patience. And the third paragraph puzzled me at first. It says, it is common in major projects of this type that more effort seems to be necessary to complete the final 2% of the project than what is required up to that point. And uh, I said, well, what is he talking about? And if, if I say anything that's less than complimentary about Mr. Shaw, it's not to be derogatory. It's to ferret out the truth. And I remember in a lot of our conversations, Fred had a kind of a knack for changing the topic and putting things under the table. Well, I said, yes, what does Fred mean here? Well, when I got to the next paragraph, I knew exactly what he meant. And I'm quoting him. The odor control, the new odor control system, one of these new processes requiring some fine tuning for proper operation. The town, together with the consultants, are working diligently to correct this, sim, sim, uh, this system and bring it back into proper, Asian, proper operation. Working diligently. 2012, that is 10 years ago. Are they still diligently working to solve this problem? That's the biofilter that's in there now. That's the new system. And in the end, he thanked us for our patience. 10 years of patience. Uh, that's probably one of the few commodities that's been in high supply since then. Now, I support you folks here. There's no question in my mind. I have an engineering background. I'm, it's in fluid flow and heat transfer. It's not in sewage. I'm no expert in that field. But I believe, and most of the people believe here, that you folks here are experts. You know now where the sewage odors are coming from. And you also know the best way to correct this thing. And we don't believe it's just bio filter that Fred Shaw is kind of pushing aside and saying, we'll be diligent and fix it. We appeal to you, and we want to support you, both in terms of interaction and finance. You need more money to do this thing. And what, one thing that I won't support, and I don't think anybody in the audience will support, is the Band-Aid approach that's been going on for 48 years. We want you to solve this. We believe you have the ability and the talent to solve this. You're not new at this. You're experts. But please take a course which has real meat to it and provide us with a real solution. Uh, I wish us all luck, and we want to work with you, and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Art Ute, 482 Main Street. While you're contemplating all this, just want to reiterate four points that have been made by others, but just so we summarize everything. There is a problem and there's an imperative it needs to be fixed. We've had some uh, few discussions about issues that things are happening that they're coming to an understanding. Sewage treatment is not cutting edge in the sense that we're inventing brand new systems every five years or ten years. The basics have been known for over a couple centuries almost. So I would expect that whatever uh, is discussed or whatever, that the experts are in contact and in discussions with other municipalities that already have similar systems and have addressed their problems and understand why it works for them and it's not necessarily working here. Again, we, we should be able to leverage other municipalities' understanding of the situation and their experiences. We talked a little bit about growth, and as part of your deliberations, we really need to get 
commitment or an understanding from the experts just how much capacity is in the system currently and how much we expect that we might need or uh, can the existing system cover it. I foresee that if we're at right at margin right now, in five years they may come back and say, hey, we need to build a whole new plant or expand the plant significantly, and that's something that might be addressed better now as part of an overall solution. Lastly, and this has not been discussed, all these um, estimates were done a year, year and a half ago, and as all of you have seen, probably in your personal lives, everything's gone up in cost, materials, labor, energy. So a $1.2 million estimate done, over, well, probably well over a year ago. Boy, I hope you guys don't get sticker shock when you see what it really comes in as. But it does need to be addressed. Thanks. My name is Doug Gugino. I live, I live at 55 Chapel. So I have maybe some monetary questions here. It, it seems like the budget's being considered, right? It says proposed. So this is, a, this is an active. Correct. Yeah, that was approved this evening. Oh, it's been approved? Mm hmm So on the capital improvements page, there's own, there is $200,000 allocated to an odor control system. It doesn't seem like it's this new, this different media. So I guess the question, if this budget has been approved, and I guess there's no way to change it this year, but one of the suggestions from the neighbors is, if you come to a conclusion that there is something to do for this odor control, don't spend that too much. The other thing that's interesting to me is the clerks, I don't even know where Clark Street is. I've only been living in this area a little bit. But they're all, we're already delivering a lot more sewage there because we need to improve the pump station. So everything, typically treatment plants and pump stations are designed for 20 years. Okay, so it's an upgrade or a replacement? It's an upgrade. Upgrade. And I can speak to um, the other question about the 200000 um, the idea, or the plan was um, to purchase the material, the um, synthetic material, and do the engineering, and then in the following year, um, do the construction of the uh, biofilter. Okay, so I guess there is a, there's a plan that was presented that, that we don't get, that, that we're not privy to. Um, so you guys might want to consider where, what is it? Right? Are you taking steps toward the recommendation? So I, I applaud that the rec that that study was made. So are you? Is this two hundred thousand, fifty percent of the three hundred and eighty, which is the replacement of the media, but done by by W by the pollution control employees, so the cost is less. So I'm just I'm right. I'm just kind of asking, what is your? Do you know? Are you stepping toward things in the recommendation, or um, th that's my question. The other interesting thing is, is this whole three and a half million from a grant, or is it a loan? So that's gonna, uh, we're applying for clean water loans. Um, so that, that'll come back to us, and that's in the revenue side. And actually, I failed to mention it during um, the budget conversation, um, and I should have. I spoke to the director of finance, and that's, that should be removed from both the expenditure and revenue side. Because a you believe it'll be a grant to the pollution control? It's gonna be a loan. So okay, clean so water. In the following years, it'll be part of the debt service. Correct, it's a 2%, a 20 year 2% loan. Is there any more money? Do you want to invest in the carbon system? The biofilter? So, and then, then there seems to me some un, unknowns here. The carbon is better at addressing peak loads, but you alluded to you got to replace it every five years. Well, you got to replace the, the wood chips every two years. You have to replace the engineered media every 10 years. And then you suggested 
well, maybe we can do both of them to reduce. I, don't, I, I didn't quite understand it. But to me, there's a there's sort of this operating cost forecast, too. Um, so I'm really just point, asking, during the deliberation, was there sort of a 10-year forecast of operating costs? And what would that look like if you put the carbon filter in? And one of the savings would be, well, you don't have to put new wood chips in every two years. And is there money for that, the big stuff? It seems there maybe there should be money for the little stuff, which is the new, the engineered media. So we weren't here while you were deliberating, but it seems the, I'm not sure, Again, you haven't asked these questions yet, but you probably had an idea that you were this 200,000 was half of the engineered media cost. So maybe you, are, you already made the decision that, well, you did, because <laughs> you just told me, All right? So you've already made the decision to go engineered media. The hope is that it's not the 380, it's the 200. What is it going to be next year? Is there something more while there might be an opportunity for wherever the three and a half came from? So I don't, I, you, I'm not saying you didn't consider these, but these are my questions. Yeah. So we are, we were planning, the plan was to follow the recommendations, rehabilitate the biofilter with the engineered media, um, take readings. If we're still getting high H2S readings, then go to satellite system or start considering a uh, full carbon upgrade. Okay. If you do invest in the carbon, do you need the satellite system? No. So, 480 for the engineered, 380 for the satellite system. And then there was some recommendation of please do this other thing too that had no money on it. So, that's close to, that's already 800 and something. So the difference is $300,000. So the carbon avoids not only the 480, but the 380. You don't have to put the engineer in, and you don't have to, they will tell you you're gonna do the, the satellite system. Maybe not this year, but you're already thinking about it, right? You, you don't have to pay for those things. The gentleman here said, don't spend the 200. Let's consider the bigger system. So um, I guess those are my questions. So. Um, Any more questions or presentations? Sure. I was representing Howard again, 763 Main Street. I wanted to answer your question, Heidi, about what are some of the effects of odors about our property values that in the cold. I'm a real estate broker. I know the industry. All of you probably know that too. Why is that okay? Why is it okay to say, well, we're going to we're going to tweak it a little bit more. We're going to stay on top of it when your engineering study that you spent 48,000 taxpayer dollars on tells you it's not going to work. How does this make any sense at all? It says clearly in this report the disadvantage of doing this is it won't work. And it won't handle peak odor loads. Now that explains to me why every weekend is obnoxious every weekend. Last year was completely obnoxious. I was texting two or three times a week to Jeff LeMay. Oh my God, Jeff, what's going on? Well, it was too much rain. Well, it's too dry. 
Well, another thing they say in here. You need to move away from the biofreezer because you can't control it. Why is it okay to do this to us? We spoke to the, the manager of the plant in Glastonbury who said, South Windsor has a horrible reputation in the industry. He said, we were all shocked when they went with that biofilter. It was the cheapest and the weakest thing they could have chosen at the time. And it has never worked. So spending more money, more taxpayer dollars, to put another Band-Aid on it, it's completely infuriating. And it makes zero sense. And you are not good shepherds of the ta town's money if you're doing this. Have some pride in your town. How can you, when I went to see you a couple of weeks ago, you told me there was no problem. Our data shows there's no problem. Yep, thank you. Now this is helpful to hear from, from the neighbors because honestly I wasn't aware of the extent of it um, until tonight. And I think also it is helpful just hearing it directly and well, you know the emotion behind yeah. it. So we but do appreciate it. I'm aware that there was even problems. It shocked us. When you read this report, this is shocking. This report says there's an awful problem in here. The, the odor control system is short circuited and untreated odors are, are in the air. That's what we've been living with now for years. I'm, again, I'm Floyd Baranello, and uh, I live with Gene. I'd like to ask, how much money does the, this commission have in the bank? So we have two reserves. One's a capital reserve. Um, it's a fully funded reserve per the um, WPCA regulations at a million dollars. And we have a second reserve the replacement reserve, which is funded at about 1.2 million, and the target number is 4.4 million. So the one is so the, the four point. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm I'm just asking. When when do you think you get four point? Was four point two? Was that? What the it's approximately four. Uh, one, so our target the, amount is 4.4. Obviously, I'm trying to get to find uh, what I'm asking. If you have money. You have money to pay for any of these options. Is there, a rec is there a way that you could spend the money and still meet your uh, regulatory obligation? As far as our water discharge permit or the WPCA well, I'm just saying, if you, I, regulations? I, 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 I don't understand. I don't totally understand your role, but if you need to have a certain reserve, for whatever the reserve is for. Is there money available? If, if, if you, you, everybody got motivated and said, you know what, I'm gonna spend $1.2 million, hammer down, boom, spend the money. Does that, how does that affect you going forward? I'm just, I'm curious. I just don't know, I, how are you, let's assume that you were gonna go forward with the, with the million dollar expenditure. How would you obtain that money? Is it available now? Is it available as a grant from the future? I, I, I'm just curious. How right, so that is that is available money. Um, one of the funds is used to stabilize sewer user rates. So if we see a, a sharp increase coming, we can um, use some of that money as, as generated revenue from the reserve account. Um, the other money is kind of if there's a sewer line collapse or a, a catastrophic malfunction of equipment, that we can do that, um, pay for that emergency repair. Let me ask this, and this is a hypothetical. If you decided tonight to spend the 1.2, is it possible that that could be done? I don't know if we, if that decision would be made tonight. No, no I'm not, I'm hypothetical. If, if it was made, could, 
is there financing available to do it? Is, I guess that's my question. It would just, I mean, you can consider it a savings account, so it would just come out of a savings account. Okay. All right, so the, can I just, in my mind, think that there's money is available? Is that a, a, a wrong thought for me? Yeah, have? we have approximately 2.2 or 2.3 million right, in, we in reserves. Want to it, but so over, over a five year period, will you replenish the money if you did spend? Or you're not going to spend $1.2 million tonight. That would be spent over. And how long would it take to put a $1.2 million upgrade to? Is that a one year, two year? So 18 months, two years. Let's say, let's say two years. So talking about $600,000 this year and $600,000 next year. Is that doable? It's just my question. Is it doable? So most of our, pro our, our projects are funded through sewer user rates. Um, uh, sewer user rates, okay. um, which are approved by the authority. Um, so there's a balance. That, and that, that's kind of why we split the project into engineering, acquire material, and then do the construction in the following okay. year. Um, because there's only a certain, you know, we have pots of money, and we have our fixed cost, variable cost, and then our capital improvement plans. Um, so we maintain a, a 10 year capital improvement plan um, and we have 11 pump stations to maintain 130 miles of sewer line plus the treatment plant. What we would like to find a way is a plan that can come up with and say, we've decided to go along to this, this goal, whatever the goal is, and we're gonna do it by taking third year, third year, and third year. If we were to hear that this is a three year plan, We'd be happy. Five-year plan would be a little bit less happy, but we could we'd understand that. That's what we like to find. Is we like to like you to recognize there's a problem. We would like you to fix it. So, and you answer my question, so I'm, I'm satisfied. But I'd like to ask the council here, committee, the group. I'd like you to think about this. Uh, I'd like to have one or two answers. I don't. You could all answer. I'd like to know what you would do if you had to live with the problem that we have. I'd like you to think about if this was in your neighborhood and you had to be exposed to this, how would you feel and what would you do? What would you want to have happen? Think about that. I'd like to hear somebody say something. Yeah, I know personally I would definitely want to hear a plan and I, I think that's what the authority is going to yeah. come up with is a, is a plan that's going to address these concerns and we not to speak for everyone, but I think we definitely all understand. I mean, certainly would not want to live um, with that. Yeah. One thing I want to clarify is that the only way to build for quite a biofield is after. The biofield we have right now is short circuit issue, but that's why we recommend if we do not have money to build a pump filter, we go with the, the biofuel upgrade and we definitely need to build the, the older Asian system. Also, this engineer needed a better, we call it the uniformity, so that will give you better performance when you use the sodium or the, what that, the hydrogen sulfide combination. That's why I call it that phased approach or something. So it's really based on availability. So, fo folks, if I could, we could go around on this for a long time. Um, we, we've hired engineers. We're, we're trying to act, ask professionals. We, we've heard from you, and I agree with every one of you. It is not acceptable. No one here, we all agree that it's not acceptable in any one of our parts of our neighborhood. H however, it's, it's not an easy solution, right? There's lots of moving parts. The, the, Pipes throughout town are, are 40, 50 years old, and, and so there's there, there's other issues, and, and it, it comes down to money. Uh, I assure you that we're going to make a, a decision with your encouragement for a long-term solution, and, and and if the money's a problem, then we'll find a way to go to, to get the money, and if that goes to referendum, then support it. 
Um, but we hear you. But we hear you. Uh, I think we kind of need to get on with it. With uh, unless it's something tragic, we probably need to get on to our meeting. I, we hear you. Thank you. No, the, the public comments are all definitely appreciated. So thank you everyone for speaking tonight. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, one, once yeah, we so kind of discuss Tommy. it and um, come up with a plan. If, if anyone wants to be on the group email that is not, um, there's about 15 emails, I believe, that we can get you on the group and use that as a communication tool. Uh, you can put it on the sign-up sheet. Um, I should be called Tom. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, 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 I appreciate, appreciate it. Can you hold up the site and get Sure, go ahead. Okay, Tom Delnicki, 130 Felt Road, South Windsor. One very simple question that I have in my mind after listening to this entire discussion. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Tom. Hey, Jeff. Because I can't hear you. Yeah. Thank you. And we've heard references to how other towns don't have the problem we have. Do we know how other towns that have wastewater treatment plants, and I like Mattabasset, like Enfield, I've heard Glastonbury referred to, uh, please don't use the MDC as a reference point because uh, I work there and they never really have addressed the issue there because the town of Wethersfield is always complaining. But to find out how the other communities have handled it because, and, and I'm not throwing cold water on tie and bond, but we're talking about Westerly, Rhode Island and New Milford, Connecticut as the two close to closest examples of how they've made an economical suggestion as to how you to go about it. It would be worthwhile, though, 
to ask the wastewater community how they're handling the problem in their communities because there could be an opportunity to learn something other than what a consultant, and no, no offense to Ty and Bond. When I worked at the district, we had Ty and Bond, we had Camp Dresser and McKee, Smith, we had a variety of consultants that would come in, and each one would come in with something different, it would seem, and it would tend to be steering in one direction or another. But to find out how other communities are doing this, and how they're handling it, and how effective it was, what ever they did because I would think that if you spent 400,000 a million dollars million and a half in another community and they have had success then that lends a lot of credence to the approach that you may want to take so it wouldn't be a very costly deal I wouldn't think to poll yeah, the we, other communities around us and ask them exactly what did they do. Yeah, we've actually toured um, Madden Bassett to look at their order control, Vernon, um, who's going through an upgrade now, yep. and Glastonbury, thank you. But, but you've got, um, you've got and then we're going to Southington. Them, yeah, we have a tour plan for Southington this week to look at uh, the Vapex system, which, uh, and I think they also have carbon there as well that we were going to look at. So yeah, we are doing some research and some follow-up and- And um, to empirically find out how the residents reacted after the work was done. Because it's one thing to find out what somebody's doing. It's another thing to find out, did you have a situation where the residents said, hey, you know, that really solved the problem? Mm -hmm. Or is it still status quo? You know, that's the old adage, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. So that's just a suggestion, listening to the dialogue here tonight. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. I'm just going to ask, about, I, I spoke with Mike Bice, who's the superintendent, guy in control of the Glassbury plant. I think they have a carbon system there, and yeah, a they, chemical system. Right, they have a wet scrubber and then right. two smaller right. carbon systems. He doesn't use the chemical system because he doesn't want to put chemical effluent into the air. The system that they're using, they haven't had any issues with. Right? And he's, you know, as he says, knock on wood, we, but we have the chemical system as a backup. Mm -hmm. So he's a good resource. I'm glad to hear that you're examining these other places and that may have a the carbon system ultimately I think that's the recommendation. That's probably the, the best approach that will solve this issue. So any input you can get with systems like that is obviously going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you'll come up with a plan and say this is where we're going to do and this is our target date. Hopefully I'll live long enough to enjoy that target date. Thank you, Floyd. All right, so moving on to uh, the superintendent report. Okay, as part of the superintendent report, um, last month was we celebrated Public Works Week. Um, the water pollution control facility in the town garage hosted over 100 second grade students and chaperones from the Orchard Hill Elementary School. Um, students learned about the importance of treating wastewater toward, toward the laboratory, viewed organisms under the microscope, learned about equipment that is used to maintain the sewer system. Um, also during the week, uh, awards were, are presented each year during that Public Works Week. Um, this year, Citizen Civic Group Award 
went to the WPCA chair, uh, Steve Wagner, for his work with the authority, uh, planning and zoning, walking wheelways, um, among his other contributions to the community. Um, we, on the following Saturday, we had a food drive where we collected um, food at Geisler's and that benefited the um, South Windsor Food Bank. Um, Platt Hills Solar Farm ribbon cutting was held May 6th. 33% um, of the project's energy will be used to offset electrical costs at the water pollution control facility. Um, as far as treatment plant and collection systems, um, the process portion, uh, we continue to maintain over 98% treatment efficiency and meet our NITIs permit limits. The maintenance department uh, made I'm sorry, uh, the maintenance department um, made uh, some repairs to the grit chambers uh, one and two. Uh, this is a very time consuming effort by our group and um, it's a pretty nasty job. So they did a great job with that. Uh, there were also repairs made to the UV hydraulic lines and adjustments to the operation of the sludge storage tanks, which uh, was discussed this evening. And we are going to continue to monitor each two S levels as well and make any other uh, adjustments that we can to minimize H2S. In the collection systems, five pump station wet wells were degreased and um, we had some staff assist Green Mountain Pipe with the pre-lining operations for the phase four, which I'll discuss a little bit later. Uh, capital improvement projects, the Clark Benedict and Pleasant Valley pump station upgrades. The 60% design is under staff review. Um, we've met with, uh, we met with uh, town staff and DEP to discuss clean water fund application and necessary permits. The aeration wear gate improvements. Uh, we executed a comment, uh, contract with Warden and Kern for the engineering services portion of it. Um, where they're gonna analyze some other options that we may have and um, look at potential cost savings that we, that we could have. The ARPA projects, um, phase four is the sewer Sewer lining and manhole improvements. Uh, Green Mountain pipe began the cleaning and CCTV inspection uh, prior to lining the pipes. And they're planning to start small diameter pipe next week. Uh, UV disinfection, the design work is underway. Clark Street valve, I don't have anything new to report for this month. Um, as far as I know, the parts have been ordered and we're just kind of waiting on material at this point. And then once that material is delivered, we'll schedule to have the repair made. The Collector of Revenues Office is reporting a delinquent balance, and this is inclu includes the Grand List uh, 22. Uh, commercial delinquent balance is $87,498, and the residential delinquent balance is $162,296. The collection rate to date for the commercial side is 94.3% and the residential side is 97.67%. Um, so do at that point, have, I do, do we have those numbers or? What's it? No, that, no, she gives it to me, the most updated numbers on okay. Monday after the packets are sent okay. out. Okay, thank you. I can, you're good? Okay. All right, thank you and then, uh, uh, item F, bill, change orders and disbursements. Oh, there's one more item about the clean water fund oh, yeah, resolution yep. process. Um, I just wanted to update the authority on uh, the coming steps that we're gonna need to take to uh, apply for the clean water fund. Um, so speaking with DEEP, they requested a resolution from the town council uh, for the clean water fund loans of the pump station upgrades. Um, I spoke with the director of finance and she reached out to the town's bonding council um, to draft a resolution for the project. Um, she also confirmed the sequence of events um, that the resolution would come from the town council and not the, not the authority. Um, however, WPCA, so it was explained to me that the authority approves the project and paying the loan with sewer user fees through a resolution that is then approved by the town council. So um, what I'm planning is for September to have a resolution drafted by the bonding council. Um, it'll be discussed and reviewed 
and then at that point it'll be sent to the town council for approval and what that's going to do is um, give the town manager um, the ability to enter into an agreement for the clean water funds um, so um, I just wanted to update the authority on, on the coming steps that are going to be required I will try. Um, it was explained to me that the authority approves. So basically, we're agreeing that the authority is going to agree to do the project and pay for the project with sewer user fees. Right. That'll be drafted in a resolution, which will be presented to the authority. It'll be approved. And if it's approved, it'll go to the town council for approval. And once that's approved, then I can submit that to the EP for the clean water application. But the town council can say no. Correct. We want you to do this instead. And it's, it's a, right, it's essentially giving the town manager the ability oh. to enter into an agreement. Yeah. Is how it was explained to me. That, that didn't, I know my will doesn't settle right with me, but what do I know? Thank you. Um, all right, then just the bill change order and disbursements. No. Nothing. Nope. Okay. Any unfinished business? Uh, no, none sir. that I'm aware of. Anyone? Um, the executive session is that. Uh, it's holding on that. Right. 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 We don't have any items on that. Okay. All right. Yes. I would like to make a motion to close. Second the motion. All right. All in favor? Turn this thing up.